Hello and welcome to the preview show as we look ahead to Town's trip to AFC Wimbledon this evening. I'm delighted to say that we're joined by Town fan and TV presenter, most recently at CNN, Kate Riley. How are you doing, Kate? Yeah, really well. Just absolutely honoured to be on the show with you and just thanks so much for the call up. Just hope I keep my place, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you for joining us. We, we really appreciate it. Um, I suppose there'll be a lot of town fans that do know that you're a you're a you are a Ipswich fan. So just just give us a bit of a background as to how that came about. Yeah, so I'm not Ipswich born and bred. I'm more adopted Ipswich, shall we say, and a very proud um, adoptee of Ipswich and Suffolk as a whole. Um, so I was born in California. My mum's American, my dad's British, and I grew up in Hong Kong. Um, but then we settled in Woodbridge. I went to the local girls' school here in Ipswich, and that's when I started um, babysitting for a couple of town players. So um, think Jermaine Wright. Chris Makin, so that was quite a good time to be introduced um, to Ipswich Town. Um, football was like always on in the background. We lived in Cameroon for a time, and when we were there, it was during the World Cup. So I was obviously aware of football, but I hadn't actually been to any live matches. And then it wasn't until I was working um, for a couple of those players that I got to go to some of the matches. And that's when I had a real awakening. And I thought, goodness me, this is a bit of my calling. And then I thought, so I didn't know what I wanted to be um, really uh, growing growing up. I always knew I wanted to be a reporter, didn't really know um, what area of expertise. And then having gone to a few matches, I was sort of thinking, how do I make my hobby, my career? Um, and then, yeah, I went to journo school and still have my love for Ipswich. And uh, yeah, the rest is history, I guess. Yeah. And you're, you're currently living in, in Singapore, aren't you? It's been a, you've worked for some, some big TV corporations, Sky and BBC, just to name a couple. Just give, uh, give the viewers a little background into your career. Yeah, so you might find it funny being an Ipswich fan and former season ticket holder up in North um, that I was based in Norwich for a long time working for the BBC and I had such an amazing education there. I did, did all, all the jobs from making the tea um, and I sort of joke with friends and family that I clearly was terrible at making tea and coffee because I wasn't in that role very long and they quickly palmed me off onto the sports desk. So um, yeah, I used to pre Produce phone-in programs. Canary Call is a is an infamous one in in the local area, and uh, yeah, just a, used to report on Norwich. So I had uh, I learned under Paul Lambert as a new reporter when he was the Norwich manager when they were in League One, and then obviously Championship and uh, onto the Premier League. And then I used to do alternate. Um, Saturdays for Lucky, so I would yeah. interview Roy Keane at Ipswich one Saturday and then Paul Lambert up the road in Norwich um, the next Saturday. So um, that went on for some time and then Norwich were in the Premier League and I wasn't really getting um, that much job because when teams go into um, the Premier League, um, that's one sort of match of the day send their reporters. So there's no point sending the local reporter yeah. and the match of the day reporter. So I thought, oh, what am I going to do? So I heard a rumour that the boss at Sky Sports News was actually a former BBC Look East fan. So I contacted him and then before you know it, I had an interview. All the interview was was really who's the manager of Colchester United. Well, as I used to report on Colchester United, I answered that one, and then the next thing you know, um, yeah, I got I got my sort of debut covering uh, Norwich City on transfer deadline day, and I guess that was my big break at Sky Sports News, and I just had the best time um, being a reporter, correspondent, and the presenter there. So very happy memories both at the BBC and Sky Sports News. And at the moment, you're just just on a working freelance in Singapore. Is that right? Yeah, I am. Yeah, so so keep my hand in um, with podcasting and interviews like this, and you never know, might be going to the Tokyo Olympics. But we've got to see what happens with COVID and international restrictions and quarantines. I've already done one week, uh, one stint of quarantine with a baby, and that was really hard. I don't know if I could really do 
So like quarantine in Tokyo and then quarantine back yeah. in Singapore, that would, that would be a lot. So, um, and I really have to mentally prepare for that. But yeah, you never know, I could be off there. Brilliant. And um, let's get talking about Ipswich Town then, Kate. So obviously we'll, we'll touch upon the, the big news story in the last week. So the, the takeover of Game Changer 20, becoming the new owners of Ipswich Town. I just want to ask you if you can answer with your fan hat on and then your journalistic hat on, how you felt, how, what was your reaction to the news? Okay, so you're really asking a lot of me here. I'll try and be um, as neutral as possible when it comes to being a journalist. So let's give the journalistic answer first. Obviously, this is a very exciting story, but from a journalist's point of view, don't know, these, these owners aren't household names, so um, I spent quite a lot of time researching them and texting and calling people in the States, sounding out whether um, they knew about them, what they knew about them, that sort of thing. So um, that was quite exciting to, to learn about their successes as businessmen and uh, their, especially Brett Johnson's experience in the UK and how he came to love the game. So um, I very much enjoyed learning about them. Um, and from a journalist's point of view, this is just so exciting. This, this sort of thing hardly ever happens in our geographical area. So, um, so that was really good. And for once, something um, positive to talk about. Also, I think what came as quite a surprise as a journalist that we've heard whispers about this quite early on. Usually we only hear these things once they're done and dusted and everything is signed. But the fact that the ink wasn't even uh, flowing at that stage on a contract um, it's quite unusual for journalists and fans to hear um, about that sort of deal at that stage. Um, from a fan point of view, I'm just so excited. When you look at um, Brett Johnson and Burke Bakai and what they've done and Mark, what they've done with the areas that they've invested in. They're not just invested in the team, they've invested in the whole area. And of course that brings jobs and that brings things to do and that brings families and fans into areas. Of course, I'm talking about a life post COVID, pre COVID, not obviously during all the lockdown restrictions. Um, so I think as a fan, I just get very excited about that. Plus also, I've lived through the Roy Keane era and I thought that that was the biggest story of a generation um, being a town fan. But really, this takeover is um, one of the biggest stories of a generation. And it's just so exciting that it came to fruition. And I, I really look forward to next season and, and to see what the guys do. Yeah, it was such a shame on, on Saturday, regardless of the result, even with that it's played behind closed doors, you know, and if it was a a pre-COVID world, I'm sure the impression I certainly got from, from Brett and the, and the fellow investors, you know, that they would have been over at Portman Road. They would definitely have been there for the first game. And like, you just know as a town fan, Kate, how good that atmosphere would have been. It's such a shame that it was behind closed doors. I mean, regardless of the... I know. I know, but maybe if, you know, we get our vaccine passports next season and the guys can fly over from the west coast of the States and, you know, I envisage them walking out to Bourne in the USA and a 30,000 um, seater packed out stadium at Portman Road. I'd call me cheesy, but I love that kind of thing. So that's what I envisage next season. And it was just, just talking about the game itself in isolation. It was obviously... A disappointing result. The games are running out for town now. If you know, we we'll say that, but it's still sort of three points off the playoffs. It's still there, very much there for the taking. No one's really taken that fifth or sixth place. Yeah, no offence to Ipswich, but it's kind of like the most Ipswich thing going in that it's there within grasp. It's just we're not grasping it. <laughs> <laughs> and in a league, it's just annoying that in a league where perhaps got, it might all come down to goal difference, we could get in the playoffs. Um, it's just, I don't know. You know, we're plagued by injuries. It's been a really weird season. It's the strangest league. Um, yeah, all those factors combined, the injuries. I don't know. Matt Gill post match said there were lots of positives. And I guess. Holy helping us out with uh, another clean sheet is a positive. It's just, it'd be nice if we had a bit of firepower up front. Yeah, and Tristan Nydam being one of the positives coming back two years exactly to the day since he, he last played competitive football for Ipswich. 
brilliant to see him back out on the pitch. Yeah, and I have to say credit to him, such a young lad, being injured for such a long time. And his injury came, or his rehabilitation came in a time whereby, you know, everyone just had such an awful year. Everyone continues to have such an awful time. And I don't know, that young man must have really shown a lot of um, mental strength and maturity to just get through um, what he had to get through. So um, sorry if that's, I've sort of turned the conversation that's to be really, um, really serious, but the more I researched him and the more I read about him and then I read his post-match um, comments from Saturday, you just realize how much he's gone through. Um, so wonderful to see him back on the pitch for 30 minutes. He did say 30 minutes was really tough. So I just hope that he got some rest um, today and then he'll be able to play on Tuesday. And uh, yeah, we can, yeah, he's hungry for it. And perhaps that kind of hunger is what we need to push on and, and get that playoff run. Mm. I mean, defensively, Town currently sit fifth in the League One table for, you know, best defensive record. They're fifth in the league, but it's clearly in the final third, you know, I hate to bring up this stat, but it's only um, Bristol Rovers and Northampton who have scored fewer than Town. And really, it doesn't, doesn't take a rocket scientist to see the problem there, does it? No, no. And uh, I guess that's, kind of one of the areas that we'll be focusing on next season it's just such a shame I was kind of hoping that we would see a reaction um, to Paul Cook's announcement he's definitely the right man clearly I think so a lot of the fans think so current management uh, you know current people at the top think so as well um, it's just a shame we haven't perhaps seen the reaction we were all hoping for um, sort of goals flying in with his announcement um, yeah I mean they you know Dobra had a chance on Saturday I hope you know his birthday this week I hope that inspires him maybe he goes on and scores on Tuesday I don't know maybe he's watching this and he might feel inspired who knows and um, some welcome news in, in Paul Cook's press conference pre-match. He, he, he said that, that, that Kane Vincent Young and, and James Norwood will be back in the squad. That's, that's a bonus. They're two real key players for Ipswich, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. And, uh, you know, obviously, Paul, the fans see what Paul sees. And Paul speaks the same language as the fans. He knows uh, that it's the lack of striking options, scoring options that's uh, just causing so much frustration. So, yeah, it'd be great to see Norwood back. And, uh, you know, he, <laughs> he, he splits the fans, but when he scores, we all love him. So, <laughs> fingers crossed, eh? Just looking into AFC Wimbledon in more detail, such an unpredictable league. And that was just evident on Saturday. They won 5 1 away at Accrington Stanley. I mean, just a nuts league, isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely mental. It's like what I was saying before not only is it a crazy league, it's just a really mental situation with no fans. And then, yeah, just weird stuff happens. So, no, Wimbledon are now out of the relegation zone, aren't they? Yeah. So the pressure, pressure's off, but it's not really what's annoying is they're in a fight for their lives they've just got an amazing result on the road ollie palmer who is for me a one to watch but we'll get on to that you know they're scoring goals right before half time and that's just such a crucial time to score goals i'm just really hoping that that is not the case for us when they play us uh, at their home on uh, Tuesday. One fact I did like, here's some positives. You'll like this oh, one. Yes, Paul yes. Cook, yeah, Paul Cook, during his managerial career, has never lost to Wimbledon. So there we go. There we go. And it will be a first, first visit to their new home. So the focus a win for town. Who, you yeah. just alluded to it there in your last answer, just about the key men for both sides. It sounds as though you've identified a player for Wimbledon. Yeah, so like I went through, had a look at the top scorers, had a look at the top assists, had a look at who scored on the road on Saturday um, for them. So the obvious choice would be Piggott, right? Top scorer, top assist. But actually, I just mentioned him there. It's Ollie um, Palmer, who 
Should we call him a veteran? He's 30. Can you, can you call 30 year olds veterans in League One these I'm days? I want to be, to I want to be respectful. <laughs> yeah, I want to be respectful here. Um, but yeah, it's scoring on the stroke of half time, assisting, or maybe that was an assist at half time, stroke of half time, uh, scoring two goals at the weekend. Yeah, definitely one to watch out for. And uh, I just can't believe they scored so many. Um, on Saturday that's, that's what makes me so worried so um but no shouldn't be worried we're well ahead of them in the league so have a bit of have a bit of confidence on the road so you very much see it a case of a town to just impose themselves on 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 the opposition yeah very much so we've got to be got to be energized we've got to welcome back these players from fitness I mean from injury um so yeah just really good that they've passed their fitness tests um and yeah i mean paul cook is clearly irritated by the fact that we've gone 217 216 minutes without a shot on target so i know he's finding that embarrassing so maybe he's read the riot act and uh, we might even see some goals for us flynn downs return it you know i thought from a just my personal opinion, I thought he had a really good game and, and I think Paul alluded to that this morning in the press conference. Flynn just gives him a bit more bite in midfield and energy. I thought he had a really good game and that, that's another positive, Flynn coming back because his season's been so hampered and up and down with injury this season. But if we can have him now for this run-in, that's a, that can only be a positive for Ipswich. Oh, yeah. And just if everyone can keep... Fit. That's that's really key. What I'm hoping is it keeps. I said this when we had ten games to go, and now we've only got what seven games to mm. go. And I, I'm like, please, can we be the team that just strings um, a whole load of results together, and we're the team with, with with momentum, and we go into the playoffs. Just I'm hoping that I don't know. People get energized. Others oh, the squad. The team get energized from Paul Cooks. Uh, embarrassment of late and uh, yeah it'd just be so nice if we're this momentum team I feel like we haven't been that team for a long time now so but I, it, it's just there I just sixth place is just there um, yeah I just I don't know why we haven't committed to it yet yeah like for a team that we're, we're playing a team who's 20th and you think, oh yeah, we'll walk it. But I don't know. I just, um, I don't know. Should I say my gut says we might lose 1-0, but my heart says we'll win 2-1. How about that? Well, let's, go, <laughs> let's go with your heart. Well, um, thank you very much for joining us on the preview, Kate. It's been brilliant having you on and I know it's, uh, it's the evening time for you over there in Singapore, so thank you very much for making time for us. Of course. Come on, you Blues, and all the best for the rest of the season and, and next year as well. And Town fans, thank you very much for watching at home. Don't forget that you can still buy your iFollow match passes for tonight's game at AFC Wimbledon. Thank you very much for joining us.